Hi, I'm Kristen, and today we're going to be making mini flying geese with a foundation paper piecing pattern. So it's a free pattern you can download on my website, and it's going to make this mini block, which is one and a half uh, inch wide, three inch long finished. Um, and I've got timestamps in the description if you want to jump straight to the tutorial. But I do want to tell you the background of the, the pattern if you're interested. So I've been doing um, this Rojas quilt. I talked about it last week in my scrap fabric management video. Uh, and it involves lots of cutting, lots of pieces, um, lots of stuff I'm not super comfortable with um, because I prefer doing things sort of block by block or a bit scrappy or whatever. Anyways, um, so part of the pattern is to make these units with sort of two strips and then you cut it off and then you sew something else on the edge. So I've got basically two boxes full of, just grabbing it, um, these little triangles. So I've got a light one and like a medium one. And the triangles themselves are, um, I think I measured, so they were like uh, 1.75 inches on these sides, the short sides, and like two and a half inches along the long side. And obviously you could like take two together, sew them, make a half square triangle, trim, then sew it to something else. Um, I have tried doing that with the end with another pattern that had similar little triangly off cuts and I never got through the trimming bit. I got them all chain pieced and I had all these half square triangles and they're still in a box in the <laughs> dresser. So I personally find it much easier to just grab um, a little foundation paper piecing pattern. So it looks like this. Um, this is on printer paper, but you can also print it on um, foundation paper. Uh, and I'll just have a stack of them, flying geese and sometimes some other kinds. Uh, and I just do them when I feel like it. And it's good kind of instant gratification. You don't have to wait too long to see what it's going to turn into and you can join them all together. So I'm going to get to the tutorial how to just, in case you're new to foundation paper piecing, this is a really great simple intro. Uh, and then I'm at the end, if you stick around, I'm going to show you how to join more than one of these together. Uh, and also tell you how you can size this free pattern if you want to make it smaller or larger or whatever. So let's get sewing. Okay, so I've got everything I need here. I've got my paper piece pattern cut out. Uh, just print, This one's just printed on regular paper. And don't worry that the shading's a bit different to the one you've got. It's exactly the same otherwise. Um, and so basically you just put one, either a color or a light in the middle and then the opposite on the on the outside so you'll see how it goes as we go um so this inner border is where your finished block is going to end and this outer border is your quarter inch seam so just keep that in mind so we're trying to fill the whole thing including the quarter inch seam with the fabric before we trim it so um the first piece here i hope you can see the numbers is a one so this is how we're going to follow along a one, two, three, four, and we're going to piece it all the way along following the numbers. So it's like, so by number, it's great. Um, <laughs> so first thing I'm going to do is turn it over and take a white piece. So again, these are just the trimmings from that pattern I was doing. So that's why I've got raggedy edges and things. We're not going to worry about that. So we're putting it right side up. So the right side is looking at me on the back of the paper. So I'm looking at the, if I was looking at the wrong side of the, or sorry, the side with the printed lines on it, that's the back of your fabric, not the front. Okay. So we turn it over. I'm looking at the right side and I'm just trying to arrange the piece so that, and I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I can see the dark lines through the fabric. So I can see that this white patch is bigger all the way around than the patch I'm trying to cover, which is what I want. If you're doing a big, um, like a bigger foundation uh, paper piecing pattern that had bigger patches, you'd want that overshoot to be a quarter inch, just like when you're piecing. But since this is so small, I'm not going to stress about that. It can be an eighth an inch or a little bit less, like wh whatever. It just has to be enough to make sure it's not going to pop open and it's going to hold the seam. So it's where I want it to be. So I'm going to hold this corner and hold the other one with my finger. And then I'm taking just a regular glue stick and putting a tiny bit here. And I'm only doing this for the first patch. It's just so that 
when I go to sew the second one, um, my first one's not wiggling about. Once you've got a few down, this isn't a problem, so. Right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I've got that one down, is, do you see where this line is, where it's between A1 and A2? I'm going to fold it back like this and take my ruler and trim off any extra. So I do, so I've said ideally a quarter inch, this is my quarter inch. So that's a bit less, that's fine. This is too much, right? So I'm gonna just trim it off. Okay, and then I'm gonna fold that back the way it was and take one of my colored pattern squares here. And now what I'm gonna do is line it up right sides together. So I'm going this way and I'm gonna fold it and check. What I want is when I fold it, I want this bottom line to be at least as far as the edge here, if not a tiny bit further. So I just shimmy the, that corner down and down and then fold over. Okay, that looks all right on that end, but I need to look and check, is that gonna cover? No, see, it doesn't cover. You maybe can't see that, but I can see in the reflection that that, that, isn't, that fabric is not covering that line. So I need to shimmy it back up again. So these are quite small triangles. Often when you're doing foundation paper piecing, you would probably cut the piece a little bit bigger than you need so that you don't have to do all this fiddling. But um, the whole point of, the, of making these this size was so that I could use these little triangles. So I'm going to fiddle. So, <laughs> so I'm going to put it down a bit more. And I'm gonna check it again. And it's slight, but it's gonna work, I think, there. Right, so I'm gonna try and make sure to hold it right there and flip it over. Make sure it's exactly where I put it before. And slide it underneath my machine. And I'm sewing with a 1.5 inch seam, uh, stitch, sorry. Uh, because, which is a little bit less than you would, like if you were piecing, it'd be maybe 2.2 2 .2, 2 or something like that. Um, so this is 1.5, which means there's more little needle holes, which means it's gonna perforate the paper and it's gonna make it easier to tear it away at the end. So that's the reason. Okay, so now is this gonna work? Let's see. So we fold it over, it's covering the bottom. And I'm gonna finger press it down and it's just covering that line. This one's tight, but it's okay. Right, so I'm gonna get another white piece now and I don't need the glue anymore. That was just to get those first two pieces on. And now I'm gonna do right sides together, but I'm gonna do the long side against this short side of this triangle here. So this long side and I'm gonna just place where the seam line, so I'm lining up these seams and then flipping it over. So that's good, sort of simulating how far it's gonna go. So I think that's gonna be okay. Yeah, okay. And normally I would press in between each one, but then I would have to edit out going to the pressing board. <laughs> so I'm just gonna finger press for the purposes of this demonstration. Also, worth pointing out, I've, I'm, I've used regular printer paper here so that you can see the lines and everything else, and that totally works, that's fine. Um, but you can also buy thinner foundation uh, paper that's like specifically for this, or vellum tracing paper also works. Um, and that one you can see through better, so if you're having trouble kind of seeing um, whether or not you're getting over your lines, then... Um, then those kind of papers might be better for you. Now, do you see that there's a little bit of um, white paper showing here at the bottom? That's not ideal, but we're not gonna stress about it because if you turn it over, there's the quarter inch. So we're really gonna be sewing here when we join them and there's still plenty of allowance there. So I'm not worried about that. And this is still gonna keep us straight. So it doesn't actually matter that this isn't straight. So it's actually really forgiving, foundation paper piecing. So, um, Okay, next, what we're gonna do, so every time we're gonna fold over on the next line that we're gonna sew. So that's this one, this A4 line. And sometimes you'll get this. So you have you really do need to sew a little bit over the line, but then, because you can't be just right up to the edge, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't keep it secure. But then when you go to fold, 
you sometimes need to unpick a seam or two like that, okay? Um, now I'm not gonna, I would, so you could measure, hold up your ruler and measure your quarter inch seam, but I'm not gonna do that just now. I am just going to lop some of that off. So that's fine. Okay. Uh, and again, I would normally press this with an iron, so. Um, next, we're gonna take our next colored piece. We're lining up that edge with this edge, right sides together. Make sure the point looks like it's going roughly to the center there and then hold it tight so it doesn't slip as you flip it over. Slide it under your foot and then sew along the line again. Okay, so there we go. So we're gonna fold it up and now let's have a C. Yeah, that's fine. That's covered both of the lines on both sides. So I don't know you can see that reflection or not but it, it is anyway <laughs> so okay now I'm going to fold on that line again and again you can just trim or you can take your ruler and have a C and just trim off a little bit of that excess I was really intimidated by foundation paper piecing when I first saw it because you could just see all the intricate things that people were doing with them and I thought oh, that must be so difficult and then I did like a I think I called it my learner's quilt it was really like a sampler quilt but I didn't even know what a sampler quilt was at the time anyway I basically just took a whole bunch of different free patterns off the internet and um made a block each and tried a little quilt as you go thing and so some of those were foundation paper piecing and it was when I tried it for that that I saw how easy it was and how much how much more precise the blocks looked um, and how little you really had to, you didn't have to like cut all the pieces ahead of time. Lots of people do, but I don't. Um, so I really fell in love with it. So it's like, if there's an option between a pieced version of a quilt and a, a like a traditionally pieced one where you just cut and you sew and a paper pieced version, I always would pick the paper pieced version. So I'm currently doing um, very slowly <laughs> a farmer's wife quilt, 19, the 1930s version, and I'm doing a block at a time and it's with some members of my quilt group and some of them are doing it um, like traditionally pieced and some of them, some of us are doing it with the foundation templates which is what I'm doing so and I you know it's still difficult because those are more difficult patterns than this just this flying geese one's fairly, fairly simple but it's still much easier than than if I was gonna try and cut the templates and do all of that my my issue with the cutting is just I, I get it a bit off or I'm not paying attention <laughs> or something um but with foundation paper piecing, so he, right now this is made for this size of the triangle, so it's perfect. But if I was going to do this, um, or or really more the farmer's wife ones that have lots of different pieces, but they're all really small, and I'm not necessarily wanting to cut the whole piece of fabric up, then I would often just line up the edge of the, the piece of fabric like a great big, so it's like a like a, a bolt end or something like that. Uh, or a remnant and then I'll just sew flip and then trim from there so I'll have this huge piece of fabric it's not the way to do it don't do it that way but but it means I don't have to cut out the sizes over and over again um which is the bit I don't like so you can kind of do it how you like basically so I'm just checking that this is covering my line it is hopefully even though I'm chattering you can see what I'm doing um, so this is a pretty simple one to start with, and it's also got that, you know, you, you're repeating the same thing over and over again, so it's good for learning as well. And there are far more complicated foundation paper piecing patterns where you're, um, sort of doing a section at a time and then sewing those sections together to make a bigger image. So it could, you can make, you know, you can make all sorts of stuff with foundation paper piecing. You can make like characters from stories and flowers and all sorts of things. Um, it's basically the only real rule is that you have to be able to um, draw the, the various bits in a straight line. So if you're trying to do something that's curved, you're going to have lots of little pieces to make straight lines within it. So 
you definitely have different skill levels within foundation paper piecing, but this is an easy one. So this is a good one to start with. So, okay, I'm gonna flip it over. Yeah, that's covered just fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same again, fold on my line, trim off a bit, and get my next piece. That one will do. That looks about right. I'm going to flip it and do this one. So the key thing for a foundation paper piecing is to get your patch. So the triangle in this case is the patch um, to be bigger than at least by, you know, at least enough to cover the, the lines uh, a bit beyond the lines. So for, so this triangle see is, is far bigger than actually the outline of the triangle. And then the second one is this, to be making sure you're cutting off all this bulk as you're going. So this one, threads and things everywhere. So I'm just gonna flip and check, that looks okay. And I'm just lining up the two raw edges, right sides together, flip it over, and sew it on the line. And as I said, normally I would be probably taking this to the pressing mat that's just really just beside me to press this each time to make it even crisper, but um, this is not just a quicker way to show you. So. Okay, and I'm on the last little goose, I guess. Do, do, do. Line him up. Okay. Okay, and there he is, he's fine there. I don't think, oh, I do. I was gonna say I didn't need to trim that bit, but I do, I've got this little corner guy here. So I'll trim that. And as I'm here, I'll go ahead and trim this guy as well. Okay. So I'll go for one of these. Oops, just blew those away. I'm trying to blow away a piece of thread. <laughs> And so this is the thing. So if you feel like you're gonna overshoot or undershoot, you just shimmy up and down that in that direction to figure out where you wanna be. So that's, that's looking okay. Hold it there, flip it over. It's fine, don't worry about all these edges sticking out. We're gonna trim all that. And so we'll just get one more background guy. Oh, now I need to trim this. Okay, this one. So I usually have a few of these, uh, either the flying geese or I think I showed in the sewing my sewing room organization video that I've also got little log cabin ones that sit just beside my sewing table. And so then if I get a bunch of little scraps like this, 
I might make a little block. And the idea being is that eventually I can just join them all together into a little scrappy quilt, I guess. So that's just at the edge. So can you see, <laughs> we just, we may, maybe the seam was a bit large there, but it's okay. We can, it won't be too bad. So, so it looks messy, right? Fine. So then we turn it over and that's the back of it. We take our straight edge and we're gonna line it up against this outer border on the pattern and just trim everything off that we don't need. Okay, and there's a little guy, isn't he cute? And I will get the other one that I did earlier and show you how I join them together. Okay, so now we wanna join these two together. I actually tried this once before and had to unpick them. This is the hardest bit. So what you really, really want to do is line up the edges and then you kind of open it up and see does everything match up if I sewed it there. So it looks like if we had it corner to corner, it should be right. So let's try and get it corner to corner as best we can. And I will show you in a minute what happens if you don't. I've got another example. So hopefully, and often what I find is when I go to put this down, it moves on me and then <laughs> it's not as straight as I want it to be. And the rest of it really, as long as your patches are big enough, it's pretty easy and pretty forgiving. You're unlikely to make huge mistakes. It's really only in this joining bit where you can get it a bit off and get annoyed with yourself. So, okay, we're gonna sew it from there to there, hoping we've got it in the right spot. That's pretty good. So there you go. It's a little off, but the points are matching each other pretty closely. So here, but the main thing I wanted to show you, so, well, first of all, here's what happens if you have it off and then you still try and join it. So these two are fine. They match. And these two are not quite fine, you see? This one's a bit higher than this one. And so then when I joined this unit to this unit, this guy's head got cut off, right? So that's the issue. So even though it's just a tiny bit, it can still look a bit. I'm not gonna unpick that because it's a good example. But anyway, when you have your two that you're happy with, happy enough with, um, what I do is I tear off the paper that's where the quarter inch seam is. So this is where your perforation from your 1.5 stitch length comes in. So we just tear that off. And then I will press those seams open at the machine, or not the machine, at the iron ironing machine and then it'll be like that and that's your two joined pieces okay so there's our two joined pieces after they've been pressed so it's still got a great big bulky seam but it's late it's pushed flat that's fine and um the paper comes up to the very edge and then this lays flat and so then if we were going to stitch another unit together so like these four you would put the right sides together sew along the line take off the seam thing and iron them flat open and then you've got your unit of four so i could in theory attach this to this and then start making myself a border or a row or a column i guess <laughs> in a quilt or something um, so there's loads of things you could use them for. You could put them, uh, you know, in a pouch or a side of a bag or whatever. But anyway, I think they're a cute, good way to use up those little corners that you get when you're making other projects. So I thought I'd share. Um, now in terms of how you can size it. So if you don't have the same size scraps that I have. So this is the, this is what you print off from the website. So finish size one and a half by three inches. Now. You can, so that's 100% scale on your printer. That's the main thing. If you want to get this size, you're happy with that size, 100% scale. Make sure you check that on the printer. If you want it smaller or bigger, then 
that's what you're doing. You're changing that scale on the printer. So if you wanted it half the size, 50%, if you wanted it twice the size, 200%, and so on. The only thing you'd have to keep in mind if you're doing that is that this quarter inch will not be a quarter inch if it's a different size than this. So if you're sizing it, scaling it on your printer, then you're going to measure your quarter inch from this inner border and then trim around whatever size you've made uh, and then join it from there. So you could, so probably best to do that when you're cutting the paper out. So, um, so when you've printed out of the printer, say this was 200%, so it's a bit bigger, then you'd use your ruler to measure a quarter inch from this inner border, just ignore the outer line, draw with a pencil or a pen, and then cut around that. And then you can just do it the same way I was doing in the video. So hopefully that makes sense. So you can just, I'll have the link in the description where you can go and download that. And um, if you're new to foundation paper piecing, give it a go. It's not as scary as it looks. <laughs> and um, it's, it's definitely my favorite way of making complicated quilt blocks or really any quilt blocks. If I had the choice, I would always do it. Um, and if you just haven't foundation paper piece in a while and you're coming back to it, then, uh, hopefully this will encourage you to get back into it as well. Uh, and if you like videos like this and you want to see more, please hit the bell for notifications, subscribe, like, and let me know in the comments what you thought and what you'd like to see videos about in the future. Um, so thanks for spending some time with me and I'll see you again soon.